from usnews.com, Arizona-based Bitcoin trader convicted of money laundering. Now, this is my friend Thomas Costanzo, also known as Morpheus Titania. My friend, I, I know him as Morpheus. And I, I hate to start with the mainstream media coverage here, but it is the simple summary here of what the public is getting about this story, at least, that I think is important to give you guys the overview. A Mesa man, this is from last week, March 29th, a Mesa man who was a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trader has been convicted of money laundering. Prosecutors say Thomas Mario Costanzo was found guilty of five counts of money laundering by a federal jury in Phoenix on Wednesday. He's scheduled to be sentenced on June 11. Each of the five convictions for money laundering carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. Now, I was there for his uh, arraignment and when, when they were asking for him to be released on, on bail a, a couple months ago after his arrest. And he's got quite a rap sheet. Now, nothing but victimless crimes. Of course, the state doesn't differentiate. If you uh, do something against the will of the crown, of course, you're a criminal even if you have no victim. And I don't think the sentencing is going to go any better for him than his arraignment went, unfortunately. But there is a big chance of getting this uh, appealed or overturned on appeal because it really is such a specious case. So. Evidence at trial showed that federal agents began an investigation of Costanzo in 2014 after identifying an advertisement he posted on a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange website. Now, I'm going to cut ahead to the chase on, on one of these big points about this story because uh, you're going to hear in just a couple minutes some of the ridiculous lengths to which the government went to set up my friend. And while the government invests literally millions of dollars going after individual victimless criminals like Morpheus. There are rape test kits sitting untested in crime labs with police departments all over the country. Now, I've made this point before in the war on drugs that while the government spends billions every year fighting the losing war on drug users. Yes, the people on drugs are winning the war on drugs, on drugs. They would have no problem with rapists out on the streets continuing to commit their crimes so long as they get to continue the extortion racket that is government. And that this goes back to 2014 uh, I've, I've known Morpheus for a long time, but four years, four years of investigation by five different agencies. Stand by, you will be blown away. Costanzo advertised he was willing to exchange in cash transactions up to $50,000. Over a two year period, Costanzo took about $165,000 in cash from the agents who he believed to be heroin and cocaine traffickers and exchanged it for Bitcoin. Now, this is where you go, US News. Oh, you're going to read my friend's mind. He believed them to be... Yeah, okay, whatever. We're going to get into that. Copyright 2018, the Associated Press, all rights reserved. This material may not be published, broadcast, rewritten, or redistributed. Oh, yeah, well, intellectual property is a racket, too. So good luck with that. But I want to get into some of the details of the trial. We have some great notes from someone who was there under Judge G. Murray Snow. On the day, on the first day of the trial, March 20th, jury selection, juror 12 was dismissed because he stated that he couldn't put knowledge he already had of Bitcoin aside if someone testified something false about Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> just to, so just, just to be clear here, what standard they're setting. If you know the truth about Bitcoin and the government calls a witness who says something false about Bitcoin, and you cannot put that aside. You cannot let go of the truth. <laughs> if you cannot accept the government's lies, well, then you must be disqualified as a juror in this case. Before opening statements, the prosecution asked the judge to address two men who were wearing T-shirts with the same words on them that were covered up, so the judge dismissed the jury. Then the judge asked one of the two men to show his T-shirt. It read, Google jury nullification. 
The judge expressed disapproval for wearing these shirts in his courtroom. One of the men questioned the judge at the microphone, asking the judge if he expected that the shirts remain covered outside the courtroom. The judge recommended that they remain covered, but noted that his jurisdiction did not extend outside of the courtroom. Yes, please follow my rules even when they don't apply. Don't ever let the jury know about jury nullification. And this is, this is a really important cause jury nullification. Uh, you should know, everybody in the United States should know, that you should go on a jury by any means possible in order to vote not guilty when the government is trying to prosecute someone for a victimless crime. You have an absolute right to vote not guilty, to hang a jury for any reason whatsoever. The prosecution then asked the judge to impose sanctions on the two men. But the judge said he didn't want to threaten anyone, <laughs> except for Morpheus. Right, no, he, he didn't want to make more of a big deal out of the idea of jury nullification so that more people would know about it, because he knows that if the American people really knew about jury nullification, the criminal injustice racket would be pretty much over. Opening by prosecution stated that Morpheus charged with drug money and that this is just like any other money laundering case. Quote, secretly converted dirty drug money into Bitcoin. Point of fact, it was the feds who converted the fake dirty drug cash into Bitcoin. Morpheus merely converted Bitcoin into cash. Now, I'm going to go through the second and third and, and, and fourth and, uh, days of the trial here. And I, I want you to just keep track of how many undercover witnesses there are. Second day, prosecutor calls first witness, undercover agent K.S. K.S. traded $2,000 with Morpheus and said he wanted to do larger trades for his import-export business. K.S.'s audio recordings of conversations with Morpheus are very poorly recorded and only discernible in parts, yet a full transcript of what was supposedly being said is displayed to the jury. At one point in the transcript, K.S. says, you know the money is from drugs, right? Morpheus' response is, I know nothing. KS testified that this response by Morpheus showed that he was unfazed by the prospect of funding Bitcoin deals to be used for drugs. <sighs> now, I think the biggest lesson to come out of this, other than that government is fundamentally evil, unethical, and has no shame or moral grounding whatsoever, is that if you are involved in cryptocurrencies at all, you have to be extremely careful because this is what the government is doing to set people up now what are their motives we can speculate right of course they all want to fund their budgets as individual agencies but we know that the prime motivations come from the very top that is the elites who pull the strings of government the banking class those who really are afraid of bitcoin displacing government fiat currency and they will stop at nothing if they were starting this investigation in 2014 with Morpheus, how many of you out there who are trading Bitcoin today are dealing with undercover agents right now who are trying to set you up? So if someone comes to you and says anything about any illegal activity being connected to cryptocurrency at all, my advice is to either run the other way or make it absolutely clear that you intend to do nothing illegal, that you do not intend to launder money, that you do not intend to support, aid, or abet anybody in any illegal activity, and then run the other way, just to make it clear that you have the transcripts of exactly what your intentions were. Now, I also record all of my phone calls. Being a resident of Arizona, this is legal. It's a one-party consent state for recording, and. Uh, I would advise that everybody do the same thing. Or if you're doing any kind of cryptocurrency transaction that's, that's publicly listed, as, as was the case with Morpheus, that you have similar records to make it clear. And of course, don't let me tell you what your own security protocol should be, but please, please listen to the rest of the story and take this as a very important warning to the Bitcoin community. KS, again, the undercover agent, KS, regularly attended Phoenix area Bitcoin meetups.
Now, there was a co-defendant in this trial originally, my other friend Peter Steinmetz. And he brought up the failed trade with Peter Steinmetz in which he notes that Steinmetz is considered innocent of crime because he walked away from the trade as soon as drugs were mentioned. This is a particularly interesting tactic because the government did not consider Steinmetz innocent at all and were attempting to charge him in the very same trial with these very same crimes until the judge dismissed the charges. On cross-examination, KS admitted that LocalBitcoins.com's ad did not invite illegal deals. That is, Morpheus was not specifically looking to do trades with people for any illegal purposes. Morpheus notes that Morpheus' clothing card said it were not flashy. He admitted that Morpheus did not have any interest in doing anything illegal during the first $2,000 trade they did. He notes that the second trade for $3,000 was agreed to in advance of the trade and that only during moments immediately preceding the trade was any mention of drugs made. So here, really important warning of very specific tactical implications. If you are set up, if you have done, uh, if, you, if you have made arrangements to do a trade with someone in Bitcoin, don't be afraid to walk away. If at the very last minute, right before making the trade, they come to you and say, oh, by the way, this is cash that I got from selling heroin. That's a setup. Run the other way. Actually, you know what? Run the other way if you want. I would have a request for you. Turn the setup on them and expose them if you can. Start making video. Like seriously, as soon as someone does that, put a video camera in their face and be like, are you trying to set me up? But hey, that might be inviting other liability if they're not an agent. So again, I allow you to uh, set your own security parameters, but I would like to see some justice for these government criminals. KS notes that Morpheus informed him that he'd never done over a $20,000 trade. Second witness, DEA task force officer who got a search warrant to serve on Morpheus's apartment by the Maricopa County SWAT team, showed pictures from the apartment of silver gold coins and a Bitcoin brochure. Third witness, JS, works for United States Postal Service, but was a DEA computer forensic examiner before that, used Celebrite UFED digital analyzer to extract messages, pictures, and browser history from Morpheus's cell phone. Yeah. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you that in, in, in this day and age, you have to assume that none of your digital communications are secure. The only way to guarantee that a, a digital communication between two people is absolutely secure is that you have end-to-end -end offline encryption. That is, you have a computer that is offline. You have what's called an air gap there, right? And you take an encrypted message on a thumb drive, and then you put it on a computer that's connected to the internet, and then you send it to someone who takes it to another computer, gets it off of that onto a thumb drive, and then goes through another air gap, takes it to an offline computer in order to decrypt it. Other than that, you cannot be certain that your digital communications are secure because your device might not be secure. And even if your device itself is somehow perfectly encrypted, it can be stolen by the government and the data can be taken off of it that way. So, Third day, fourth witness, fourth witness, TK, undercover agent for the CIA. Are you counting the agencies here? TK uses the word product in the recorded audio between himself and Morpheus, but when testifying about that product on the stand, claims he was actually referring to heroin. Cross-examination, TK testified that he initiated the raise of the trade to over $10,000, the bank recording limit, and testified that this raise was not initiated by Morpheus. Fifth witness, NS. An ASU student who was caught dealing ecstasy entered into plea agreement to avoid four to five years in federal prison. Now, this is really sad. Now, four to five years is, is, is a lot of time. And if you're dealing ecstasy and you get caught, you might be facing those consequences. That's, that's, a, that's a very real possibility. But when someone puts a gun to your head and says, oh, we'll turn the gun away if you help us point the gun at someone else, don't play ball. Don't be that guy. He entered into a plea agreement and said that he didn't know that he would be testifying against Morpheus until after he signed the plea and cooperation agreements. Yeah, <laughs> this is where you can trust us because we're government. Yeah, bullshit. 
did not mention that he was buying drugs at first meeting with Morpheus. Told Morpheus that drugs he tried to buy had been seized. Testified that Morpheus had asked if acquiring DMT was possible. Acquired D DMT for Morpheus one to two times. Morpheus might have given him cash or Bitcoin for the DMT. He didn't remember. Testified that to Morpheus, he never explicitly said that he was using the Bitcoin he brought, bought from Morpheus to purchase drugs. On cross-examination, he didn't tell Morpheus that the friend who he sold drugs with was selling drugs. He testified. Now, again, very weak setup because Morpheus isn't dumb. And yet he was still uh, susceptible to falling into this trap because this... Uh, witness said, I never told him I was a drug dealer, and I never told him I was selling pills. And in actuality, was facing 20 years times 35 international drug importations from out of the country, or for 35 importation counts, and recognized that cooperating with the government provides significant benefits. The seventh witness, SK, yes, just known as SK, also attended Phoenix Area Bitcoin Meetup Groups undercover. You guys are starting to get a picture of, of, of just what a setup this was, right? But another reminder here, if you're going to a Bitcoin meetup, at least anywhere in the United States, you get to play a very fun game called, who's the Fed? Yeah, they are there. Eighth witness, special agent JN for the DEA, testified that they began surveillance of Morpheus on February 2nd. 2017. Yeah, and I just got to point out, your tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen, when you pay taxes to the federal government, you think it's it's for protecting you, it's for the roads full of potholes. N no, no, no. It's going to these massively wasteful federal agencies that hire agents to follow around people who are not hurting anyone. On cross-examination, said that uh, uh, they watched Morpheus travel to the home of Peter Steinmetz after a $30,000 Bitcoin transaction with Detective M and was not in possession of the bag holding $30,000 after leaving Steinmetz's place. Ninth witness, KL, DEA special agent, was conducting surveillance of Morpheus as well and present during the arrest, which happened on... For 2017. Tenth witness, IRS Special Agent E. These people think they're so fucking cool. Testified about CTRs, $10,000 report requirements, SARs, and why a drug dealer or money launderer would find Bitcoin attractive due to anonymous elements. Showed image of blockchain.info BTC transaction, explained sends. I, I don't know how much more I can get into this. The judge asked the government if there's any obligation for a peer-to-peer -peer trader to file reporting requirements. And the government said no, but that because Morpheus helped others avoid reporting requirements, he is guilty. Yeah, for that. The judge was unsure of the government's reasoning and wondered whether reporting requirements and penalties that apply to institutions can be used to convict an individual then denied the defense's request to dismiss the third money laundering charge, deferred ruling on dismissing 29C as it applies to institutions on individuals. Reporting requirements found in 18 U.S.C. 1956 A3C. Judge noted specific intent requirement is different in C than B. Da, 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 da. Closing arguments from the government. Prior to meeting the undercover agents, Morpheus noted that whether or not people were buying drugs with Bitcoin was none of his business, which the government presented to the jury's evidence that shows Morpheus was predisposed to launder drug money. <clears throat> Bullshit. Told outright lies about what Morpheus said that he was that was never presented in evidence, such as the statement the defendant said, let's use Bitcoin so that you can hide your drug money. They introduced that in the closing argument, never provided evidence of that. Noted that Morpheus said, don't get shot, because he expressed this desire shows that he must not have been engaging in legitimate business, because the only people who worry about getting shot are those who deal drugs. Oh, jeez. The logical fallacies are just, I don't even have time in this podcast to deconstruct. On the topic of entrapment, Morpheus was not induced by the government to trade because the government offered no reward. Apparently, the government does not consider the thousands of dollars in cash they presented as a reward. 
Now, this is a really funny, silly point. Morpheus didn't make efforts to, quote, get to know the families of those he traded with, demonstrating that he was in it solely to do money laundering. By that logic, the McDonald's cashier is guilty because he's more interested in taking your money than getting to know your family. I love, I love these notes. And by the way, the reason we have these notes instead of an actual transcript of the trial or video is because it's done in secret. This is a, a, a courtroom where they don't allow public recording. I mean, come on, America, how the heck did we get to the point where we even put up with this? One of the undercover agents mentioned that he was dealing with a bunch of drug dealers, and from that, Morpheus was supposed to infer that his undercover agent was implying that he himself was a drug dealer. Played poor audio that was not discernible, but flashed the word HEROIN in big red letters on a screen to the jury. In order to prove that Morpheus had an intent to conceal or disguise the nature, location, source, ownership, or control of the property, the government brought up as evidence that Morpheus said he liked to keep a low profile. Even though nothing about these two words, low profile, talks about concealing or disguising, they were the only two words that the government could pull from two years of recorded audio to defend this claim now this is the best part now I, I my friend Morpheus um, I, don't, I don't think he would mind me saying that that he's a bit of a goofy guy colorful character um, wonderful man I mean kind-hearted generous considerate professional and he wears a fanny pack everywhere he goes except not now because he's in jail yeah um, Quote, you need a fanny pack if you're a money launderer. Yeah, the prosecution said that while displaying the picture of his fanny pack on the screen. The defense in this case said that the government was a hunter hunting prey. Let the real, now this is, this is the best part. This is the best part. The guy who's just moving money around legally is the one who now has been in jail for almost a year and is hypothetically at least facing a hundred years imprisonment there was an actual drug dealer involved in this who was dealing ecstasy let them go there was a drug importer involved in this importing ecstasy let them go i mean do you, do you, do you get the i'll go back to the mcdonald's analogy it's like a McDonald's cashier accepts money from a drug dealer, and the drug dealer says, I got this from selling drugs. And the McDonald's cashier says, okay. And they take the drug dealer and arrest them and say, now you need to testify in court that the McDonald's cashier accepted your drug money so that we can prosecute the McDonald's cashier. Yeah. You would think that the government is using the war on drugs as an excuse to prosecute what to them is a much higher priority, the war on Bitcoin. Morpheus was living in an apartment with a broken car. This is from the defense in their closing statements. Painted him as a loser who had never achieved success. And it's true that Morpheus is not, not a rich man by any means. He's a scrapper, trader, and uh, it's, it's really interesting to think that of all the people they went after him. Ask the question, who will be next? Well, I can tell you who is next. Our friend Morgan Rockwell, Morgan Raccoons uh, of, of Las Vegas, who's facing similar charges now. And there are people all over the country facing these charges. According to this, these notes, the government prosecutors ended trial with smiles, laughs, and pats on the back. Who cares about a totally nonviolent man who has harmed nobody spending years in prison when you've just advanced your career? And the result was that the jury convicted Morpheus on all five counts in just one hour. All members of the jury apparently were convinced of the government's logic or rather we should say obvious lack thereof now he is going to be facing sentencing on june 11th that's right he has to wait over two months to get a sentence after all of this there will be an appeal and i encourage everyone to support morpheus in any way that you can now when he went to jail we 
suggested raising money for his legal defense. We uh, suggested raising money for, for him to have in jail. Um, and Morpheus is a fucking soldier for freedom. I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, seeing him in court the day that I did, uh, I, they have a weekly conference call uh, where he calls uh, someone outside of the jail from the jail phone and they um, anybody can call in and talk to Morpheus please join those calls we're going to include the information in the notes for the show about that um, but he's not a guy who's looking to profit off of this I don't know maybe he's got some secret stash of cryptos and is sitting in jail going every day I sit here I get richer but I, I don't think that's his motivation no he is someone who's been an activist a really hardcore activist for a long time and, and I met him through uh, through Ernie Hancock Freedoms Phoenix out of uh, out of Arizona Phoenix Arizona um, also great activist Ernie Hancock um, and I, I'm just gonna close this up by sharing a, a little letter that I got from Morpheus from jail but this is back from February it took a while to catch up with me here dear Adam hi how are you doing I'm grateful to receive your book freedom now by the way my book freedom is banned in US prisons and jails but they're not very good at enforcing that ban apparently so if you uh, if you're interested in helping us sneak it into prisons and jails across the country apparently it's very popular it's uh, it's a great read it is now circulating here at CCA the books here get a great deal of mileage on them I would like to see if you have a Spanish version of the book uh, that you could send to the distribution for Spanish people since they are about 70 to 80 percent and it would in infect a great deal of minds because 90 percent of the books are English so a Spanish version of your book would get read a lot now we do have a Spanish translation if anybody wants to sponsor the first Spanish printing of Libertad please reach out to me let me know Adam at the freedom line.com and we will definitely make an effort to send some Spanish copies of freedom to Morpheus in jail you might even find people who are in different institutions uh, uh, about sending them your book as a way of infecting the minds of prisoners all over the country one person that comes to mind is Sal Menci he is doing time as a result of his Bitcoin efforts as well um, I'm sorry the handwriting here is pretty rough you can get a hold of him through Theo Chino and by the way Theo Chino great cryptocurrency activist helping out people who are in jail for Bitcoin related crimes non-crimes excuse me Theo Chino my friend from New York who I met as a result of his uh, of my incarceration his number is I'm not gonna I don't know if he wants this number public but Theo is also fighting the bit license in New York Theo is still working in the system as a Democrat however he seems to be an anarchist at heart oh I, uh, you may know him he was at my hearing and yes when I uh, was at Morpheus's first hearing I did get to meet Theo Chino and we did a video with him and Tim and uh, and Ernie as well right outside the courtroom right now I am reading autobiography of a yogi the story of Padaramsa yoga and I'm embarrassed that I don't remember the exact pronunciation of this name and I can't figure it out from his handwriting who was the one who um, brought Eastern philosophy to the United States back in the 1920s he started the self uh, reflection center here in the states he uh, was certainly an amazing guy and his stories are hard to believe however I have never been in the presence of an actual saint before I also am running a new social experiment on myself here on a quote that I read from Wayne Dyer's book quote I see clearly now his memoir which sold over 100 million copies the quote is from Thoreau Henry David Thoreau that is who wrote one who advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life he has imagined will meet with success unexpected in common hours I have been reading this saying and or writing it every day and doing what I can to have others do the same as well and see what happens as a result of this kind of thinking would you like to join me in this experiment anyway hope all is well 35 days to my trial I am going to win in loving kindness Morpheus well on paper Morpheus may have lost this round we may have lost this battle we may lose many more in the fight for freedom for information freedom for monetary freedom for Bitcoin but 
undoubtedly, we will win the war. If you want to write to Morpheus, I will also include his address at CCA in Florence, Arizona in the notes, but just in case, it is Thomas Costanzo, 732-854-08, CADC, PO Box 6300, Florence, Arizona, 85132. Please send my friend a letter. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.